Did you know that there are a lot of things that exist in front of you right now that you cannot see? Really, things exist all around you and I that science has discovered, but that we cannot see with our eyes or perceive with our senses. What are those things you might be wondering? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Here are 10 scientific things humans cannot see. Number 10 is ultraviolet light. Just think, that stuff that's giving you your healthy glowing tan, or by which I really mean sunburn, is actually completely invisible to the human eye, yet is incredibly dangerous. Ultraviolet light is a form of electromagnetic radiation that, while useful in many ways, can do serious damage to living tissue. Transmitted in different frequencies and wavelengths, ultraviolet light is literally beyond violet light, meaning it cannot be seen like the visible spectrum spectrum of light that we're used to observing. The only way that we can see it is through detectors that are specifically made to be sensitive to UV rays. These detectors convert the ultraviolet radiation into a different form, one that our eyes can actually pick up on. In a way, there are colors out there that we'd never be able to see without technology. Number 9 are infrared rays. Like x-rays and microwaves, infrared is a form of radiation with an electromagnetic charge, and like most of the light surrounding you every day, it can't be seen without special equipment. This is due to the fact that it travels in longer wavelengths than visible light. Although it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which in your waking life you perceive most often, infrared is completely invisible to the human eye. However, you can detect its presence through its heat that it gives off. When you feel the heat of the sun on your face, or the warmth of a campfire or heater on your hands, that's actually infrared waves. In fact, nearly half of the energy that reaches the Earth from the sun is infrared. You don't see it, but even your own body is giving off infrared waves right now. Number 8 are atoms. As the smallest unit of ordinary matter, it's little wonder that seeing an atom is physiologically impossible without advanced technology. These microscopic units make up all matter. Whether it's a solid, liquid, or gaseous thing of any size, it's all just a colossal collection of atoms. There are a number of different types of atoms called chemical elements, and each one has its own distinct mass. Yet, despite that, and with even your own body made up of them, none of the individual atoms can be seen with the naked eye. Atoms are so small that trying to predict their behavior using classical physics is completely unreliable due to the random outcomes of quantum physics. To top it off, every atom is actually made up of protons, electrons, and neutrons, each of which are obviously even smaller. Number seven is antimatter. First theorized by British physicist Paul Dirac, antimatter is vastly considered to be one of the most exciting discoveries in the field of physics in the 20th century. Ongoing research into it has helped us to better understand how the universe itself works. But even though the breakthroughs in establishing antimatter's existence have revolutionized modern science, these legendary beauties are so incredibly tiny you'd never know that they're even there without your own large habit on collider. For every particle, there's an antiparticle that has the exact same mass, but an opposite charge, such as an electron and a positron. If matter and antimatter interact, they destroy each other, creating high energy photons and neutrons in the process. Number six are radio waves. Whether it's sending greetings out into the cosmos or delivering the latest song by Beyonce into your car, radio waves are all around you right now, traveling at the speed of light from point to point. They're carrying a huge amount of information and you can't even see them. Radio waves are a form of electromagnetic radiation that can be utilized in long distance communication, with some of them actually bouncing off the Earth's ionosphere to get to their destination. They can even occur naturally created by light lightning or even reaching us from objects that are far out in distant galaxies. Made up of a series of repeating peaks and valleys that occur throughout, these waves are picked up by receivers after being created by a transmitter and sent out through the air around us. We just can't detect them as they travel. <laughs> <laughs> 
Number five is oxygen. Even though it's the third most abundant element in the known universe, and it's absolutely essential for ours and an ever-growing number of creatures' very survival, oxygen is something we can't see. We know it's there, of course, through various non-visual methods of detection, including during its use in combustion, but the air we breathe is, obviously, invisible. Its effects, however, are observable, such as when certain metals rust, and the element can be made visible by changing into a blue liquid form. Though it's often claimed that Joseph Priestley discovered oxygen in Wilshire in 1774 due to him being published first, it was discovered first by Carl Wilhelm Scheele in Uppsala a year earlier. Since then it's been used to make steel, propel rockets, and of course, <sighs> fill your lungs. Number four are virtual particles. There are things out there that you can't see because they're too small, or because they're perfectly invisible, but believe it or not, there are some things you can't see because they literally blip in and out of existence. Virtual particles, also known as quantum particles, often exist just long enough to communicate with what they need to, before seemingly vanishing from existence. Widely considered one of the strangest aspects of physics, these particles are made possible due to the uncertainty principle, which says nothing has a definite position, trajectory, or momentum. They can carry a varying amount of energy as long as they only exist for a short time. Basically, as you sit there watching this video, an incalculable number of invisible virtual particles are existing and then not existing all around you. Number three is gravity. Imagine something is pulling you towards it with incredible force, so much force in fact, that you literally have to struggle to pull yourself away, yet you never truly can. Well that's pretty much gravity, except when it comes to gravity it never lets go unless you're in space or doing something crazy like in a plane. Even then, technically, it's still pulling you. Gravity is a natural phenomenon that all things with mass are affected by. Everything from minuscule atoms to the biggest stars are attracted towards and and an attractor of other things, as they are both creating and under the influence of this force. Even though gravity is insanely powerful, we can't physically see it. It's kind of a scientific mystery. Though we're sure it's there pulling us forever, there's no way to see those invisible hands. Number two is the universe. So it turns out that the universe is actually pretty big, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> so big that scientists are fairly certain that humanity has barely begun to even scratch the surface of observing it all. Because of this, there's no way to know if the universe is infinite or there's some sort of boundary out there. Like ancient civilizations that thought that they could sail off the edge of the earth, we have no idea what the edge of the universe looks like, or even if it's there. Not to mention the fact that while we've pointed a telescope at much of it, only around 5% of the universe is made up of observable matter. And here's one more mind bender for you, it's possible the universe is still growing from the Big Bang. So it might be impossible to see all of it, no matter what technology we possess, as by the time we've documented it all, it's become even more massive. And number one is love. Though you may think of love as far from scientific, it very much is. And it happens to be a force that's as invisible as magnetism or gravity. Like those forces, love is a type of attraction, only it's obviously an emotional one over a more physical one. It's been speculated that love might literally exist simply for the continuation of the human race. We love people because we need them, biologically, to sustain us, and in some cases, to procreate or simply to form a family unit that will look after the next generation of Homo sapiens. Research shows that who we love can be dependent on our similarities with those individuals, as in you love your biological mother because she shares similar genes with you, but why we love our significant others is debated by many in the scientific community. 